Have you ever found yourself wondering if you are making the right choices dating as a Christian? You're not alone. My name is Jay Wilson. Welcome to the Truth Be Told Project. Here at the Truth Be Told Project, we aim to help you live according to your intended design. God has designed you for relationships. And guess what? I want you to avoid some of these common mistakes when entering in relationships. In today's video, we'll uncover the top 20 mistakes that Christians make when dating. You don't want to miss it. Buckle up, fasten your seatbelts, and get ready to have a crash course. And hopefully this helps you avoid some of the common mistakes that people make when they're dating. Also, I'm going to give you a few tips to help you make decisions so that you can have a God-honoring relationship. That's what comes up today on the Truth Be Told Project. Let's get it. Here we go. One of the biggest mistakes that Christians make when dating is compromising their beliefs and their values. They do this because they want to fit in with their partner. Sometimes they don't want any friction, so they'll compromise their beliefs. Some people even give up their beliefs. Another big mistake that Christians make is not setting boundaries. There are two kinds of boundaries that you must set as a Christian, and that is emotional boundaries and also physical boundaries. The first one is a physical boundary. You should put limitations on what you will and will not do when you're dating. Second, you want to set some emotional boundaries. A lot of people fail to set boundaries and discuss things that will offend them or hurt them. And they are surprised when people overstep those boundaries. You can't expect a person to not cross a boundary that has not been established or set. Another mistake I often see is a person taking too long to make a commitment, taking a long time to propose, taking an extremely long time to work your way down the aisle to make your vows to the person that you've been dating. It doesn't take long to figure out whether you want to spend the rest of your life with a person. It just doesn't. It doesn't take years to figure out whether you want to commit to a person through marriage. A lot of people shack up and they fornicate for years on end to have a quote unquote uh, marriage trial and they live as married people but they haven't made the commitment. It doesn't take that long to figure out whether you want to be a committed to a person or not. Don't expect a relationship to be perfect or to see if it'll work out or not. Marriage takes work, relationships take work, so be ready to work, but don't take too long to commit. I did create a video, you can find it right here, on what you should do before you get married. With that being said, another huge mistake that I often see Christians make when they're dating is they rush into commitment. They're so desperate, they're afraid of being lonely, so they rush into it, ignoring all the red flags, all the warning signs that a person displays. Oh, and don't let me forget this part. I know that the world is filled with temptation and you have sexual desires, which is a normal part of being human, but don't let that override the wisdom and common sense that you have in the, the leading and guidance of the Holy Spirit and you rush into a relationship that was not meant for you to have. Be careful, don't make that mistake. Another common mistake that I see is that some people prioritize their relationship with their partner over their relationship with God. They begin to stop reading their Bible or they stop going to church or they even violate some of the morals and principles that they should have as a Christian. You should never prioritize your relationship with your partner over your relationship with God. Here's another mistake that I often see, and that is some Christians ignore all the red flags in a relationship. They are so infatuated with their new boo. They're sexy, they're hot, they look good and delectable and they're so charming and they have a lot of charisma and they're just caught up in the moment to the point where they ignore all the other 
red flags. Avoid this mistake. Sisters, pay attention to whether or not that man has anger issues, whether he has problems controlling his hands, or whether he's manipulative or not. Fellas, you worry about the same thing. Some women could be very naggy and very controlling. Watch out for red flags. And when you see red flags, exit stage right. I'm just saying. Another common mistake I see is Christians dating other people that are outside of their faith. Or as the biblical term goes, being unequally yoked. There is a command in scripture that you are to be equally yoked with people you are in relationships with. I did a video on that as well. You can find that right here. Another common mistake that I see is when the person begins dating, they begin to isolate themselves from other friends and family. Listen, you need friends and family around because a lot of times they could spot certain things that you can't and a lot of times you could be infatuated and caught up in the moment to where you ignore all the red flags so you don't want to isolate yourself from the rest of your friends and family avoid that mistake as well another common mistake that christians make when dating is failing to communicate effectively there could be a lack of transparency and a lack of open and honest communication. You should be open with the person you're dating. Don't hide things because as the Bible says, whatever's in the dark will come to the light. So be transparent, be open, be honest. Avoid being dishonest and avoid the lack of communication, effective communication. Another common mistake that I see Christians make, and this is a mistake we all make from time to time, we have unrealistic expectations. We expect people to be perfect. We expect people to fulfill our every need, our every desire, and it just does not work out that way. No one could fulfill your every need and desire but God. So don't look for it in another person and don't expect perfection because it's not going to happen. Another common mistake that I see is people failing to seek guidance from others who may have wise counsel, someone who may observe things about you. Because a lot of times we are oblivious to certain characteristics and certain things about ourselves we could have a lack of accountability which could get us into a lot of trouble so you want to keep yourself accountable to someone so they can help you navigate and deal with challenging things and make sure that you stay within certain boundaries another mistake that i often see christians make when they're dating is they neglect personal growth focusing too much on the relationship and neglecting self-care self-elevation and personal development having a strong dependency on the person you're dating can halt spiritual growth and personal development. Another mistake that I often see is that people could be so caught up in how a person looks and they, their infatuation with that individual that they overlook common interests and common values. Or should we say compatibility? You wanna make sure that you're spiritually compatible with the person you're dating. Let's talk again about expectations or having the wrong expectations. Another common mistake that I see is a person not being forgiving and not showing grace. Holding grudges is not good. Forgiveness is something that you will continually need to do even when you don't feel like it. Don't expect your relationship to be perfect, but you want to make sure that you establish some boundaries to let the person know not to cross certain boundaries. Another common thing that I see is a person not having the right skills to resolve conflict. Failing to address conflict in a healthy way can truly damage your relationship. So avoid this mistake. Learn how to resolve personal conflict. Another common mistake I see is people being impatient during the dating process. They're desperate and they're ready to get married. They're ready to tie the knot for whatever reason and they're impatient with it and they rush each other through the process. Slow down, take it easy. 
It's good to build on a firm foundation first before you build any relationship. Another common mistake I see is people comparing their relationships to others. Every relationship is unique. Your relationship is unique. Give it time. And secondly, don't take stuff you see on social media seriously because a lot of times people are lying and putting on the front about their life. If you look at social media, it's everybody's highlight reel. Everybody's successful. Everybody's winning. Everybody has the best relationships, the best career. Everything is just going perfect. That's not truth. Don't fall for it. Don't compare your relationships to other people's relationships. Another common mistake that I see is people failing to pray for character discernment. Listen, you want to be able to discern characteristics of people. If you want to know what kind of characteristics to look out for, I created a video on that. You'll find that right here. Pay attention to a person's character. You want to be able to discern a person's character. People could lie. People could be dishonest and put on the front and make it believable. You want to pray and ask God to give you the ability to discern a person's character. Another mistake that people often make when dating is focusing too much on the physical to where they neglect the emotional and the spiritual. You want to be connected. You want to be connected emotionally and spiritually. You don't want to have an imbalance in your relationship. Another common mistake I see is that some people fear singleness. They are so desperate to get married. But they're afraid of being alone. To be truthfully honest, you could be in a relationship with someone and still be lonely. So don't expect a relationship to make you feel whole because it doesn't. Avoid the mistake of being afraid of being single. Once again, my name is Jay Wilson, the founder and host of the Truth Be Told Project. I really like to thank you for tuning in today. If you found any value in this video, I ask that you like, share, and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. What are your thoughts on this topic? Is there something you think I missed out on? Feel free to comment below. Also, if you have any questions, ask the question below. I want to thank you for watching again. Peace.